Hi there, I'm Joshua Finn from J&H Aerospace. This is the build video for the 2021 J&H Aerospace Super Protégé designed for Science Olympiad Elastic Launch Glider Competition. This aircraft meets all of the restrictions for Science Olympiad ELG competition and we believe it's the most competitive design on the market. We've had three seasons to develop the Super Protégé as the most excellent aircraft out there for this type of flying, and the results have not disappointed. This year, we are having to move away from vector board. So those of you who have come to appreciate the durability of vector board, my apologies. We don't have access to it anymore, so it's no longer an option. I'm sorry. That being said, the foam that we have supplied is very light, very rigid, very precise, and it allows you to do some things that you couldn't do with vector board, so it's a trade-off. What you do need to know is that there are going to be some materials restrictions for how you build this airplane as a result. We'll talk about those as we get through the build video. So join me in building the 2021 Super Protégé. Before we get started with the build, I need to talk to you about accessories that are available for the aircraft. So one thing that is available are these hollow tapered carbon fuselages. We also have solid taper one, tapered ones. Um, with the design as it currently is, those are actually more pro appropriate for the regular protege. Uh, however, you can use them with this aircraft. The, the issue you need to be aware of is they make it a little bit shorter. Uh, so it's the, the transitions are a little more sensitive. Um, I have found that they work very well for that, but just be aware, uh, these hollow ones, uh, we have them available on a somewhat limited basis, but we do have them. Uh, they are available separately due to the more limited supply, but they are longer and lighter than the fuselages that are included in your kit. The reason we don't include them is simply because they are harder to obtain, and I want you to be able to get complete kits regardless of the supply chain associated with this product. Next thing to look at, uh, I recommend using these little glider balancers. Um, they're available on our website and they let you get a little bit more accurate uh, measurement of the center of gravity of your airplane. And you'll find that the center of gravity point for the protégés has not changed significantly this year still right there at the wing root um, at the front of the flaps. Next tools uh, to look at, you need uh, to be really competitive, you need a precision glider launcher. So you can get this regular one that you simply load the airplane onto the front, fire it off. Uh, lots of people use those. Also we are still um, using the deluxe launcher that has a little precision, um, if I can stuck it off in the corner and now I'm paying for it. Here we go. Back to our regularly scheduled programming that has the trigger activated rubber band on it. So this is something to check out on our website. In both of the cases of these you have to supply your own yardstick. We supply the hardware for um, any handle and triggering mechanism and of course your levels and, and the little gauges at the back that are engraved with all the angles, have bubble levels, etc. Next, let's take a look at tools that you need to have to build this airplane. So, first of all, you need a good sanding block. We're going to be marketing some like these on our website. Uh, those of you who have been to our glider clinics are aware of, uh, of these very handy. Next, you need to have, if at all possible, have a good quality razor plane. This is the uh, Stanley Mini Plane, so you can just do a Google search for Stanley Mini Plane. This will come up. A lot of hardware stores have them. Sometimes even Walmart carries it. Uh, they're available for about eight bucks. It has a heavy duty blade down here that if you will take the time to hone it to a sharp edge, it gives you a very, very good cutting performance. Those of you that want to step things up a notch, this is Bruce Kimball's glider plane. Very high quality product, uh, but they are available on a limited basis. I don't give out uh, Bruce's contact information publicly on our videos. 
contact me directly if you want to get one of these and then we will um, provide you with his email address they are typically forty five dollars plus uh, usually seven or eight bucks shipping he takes checks so this is not his day job his day job is aircraft uh, voodoo engineering for for Boeing so this that's why I don't want to just publicly put all his information out there you'll want some tape to um, for, for the removable wing mount if you choose to do that on the super protege um, another accessory well that, that you need to look into having is an electronic scale this one is mine uh, we do sell a scale like this one on our website so it has a little uh, on off button right here you can set different modes I glued a piece of aluminum tubing here that lets me have a little more precision with it um, so I can put a mount in like this and I've got some foam up here if we hit tear it zeroes it back out and then I can drop my uh, super protege on here and we can I don't know if y'all can even see that let me slide the wings out of the way there you go you can see that mine is a porky 4.2 grams and yet it still flies even better than my lightest um, version of last year's model and then a couple other things to look at um, you need a fresh uh, single edge razor blade or equivalent uh, just to get really good cutting performance and then this is parchment paper available at grocery stores it provides a non-stick gluing surface great tool for making gliders and it's cheap now the last thing um, we're gonna have a limited available uh, availability on our website because I'm not a dealer for this material yet but this is Bob Smith foam safe CA there are other manufacturers of foam safe CA so Zappa Gap has some I'm not a huge fan of theirs it works um, it's just I, I prefer this uh, if you can get mercury foam safe that is the gold standard uh, because it just has a it has a few uh, additions to it that are better now previously we have used uh, Gorilla super glue for our kits in the days of vector board that was an option you cannot use this glue anymore for the super proteges um, I did successfully assemble this one with it however it was eating into the foam a little bit um, if the foam is thicker it's a little less sensitive to this but the the thin foam that we're using in these kits you you cannot use this glue it will eat into the foam so you need a foam safe CA glue um, in addition you need to get CA accelerator because foam safe CA does not harden as fast as regular CA so you need a hardener uh, unless you're going to weigh the parts of your plane down while they dry now obviously you can use any uh, any old super glue on the balsa wood parts as you're assembling the problem is at some stage you're bringing everything together so yes I'm making a wood to wood bond but there's foam Let's, well let me give you an example I've got the wing put together but now I need to join the wings well there's the opportunity to introduce wet glue onto the the foam as you're working on that joint which will of course damage the foam so if you use foam safe CA throughout that solves that problem the newest uh, as of about two years ago um, the new formulations for Bob Smith CA accelerator some people call it kicker uh, are foam safe it says right here 100% foam safe now that doesn't mean it's safe on all foams but it is safe on the foams that we use what you need to know in regard to that is check your CA accelerator to make sure it's foam safe don't buy one that doesn't say so because there's the chance that you could have a problem um, now one thing is there's there's enough excess foam in the parts that you could test on a small piece of the carrier sheets so that that's a good uh, thing to do is test 
your glues before you introduce them onto those flaps. These kits are not inexpensive. Uh, the reason they're not expensive is due to the amount of manual labor involved in producing them. So as a result, you need to check well in advance to make sure you're not d damaging uh, highly advanced parts. So having given you all of those warnings, let's build an airplane. If you have built a JNH Aerospace kit before, you know what's next. We open up the kit and we go through all the goodies that are in it to make sure that you know what is supposed to be in your kit because we do occasionally mess up and accidentally leave things out. Sometimes things get lost because more multiple people have handled the kit. So you need to make sure that everything's in there. And if everything's not in there, you shoot me an email and we get that resolved. So, first up, you should have three of these carbon fiber fuselages. They're about 19 inches long. Keep those close by, don't lose them. You should have a wooden launcher handle so you can make your own catapult, a simple one to work with. And if you spend enough time, you can actually become very competitive using one of those. You should have some 1 16th inch tan rubber with which you will make your hand catapult. Next you're going to have a plastic baggie and inside the baggie are these foam earplugs used as nose bumpers and then down here, now you're going to open up, you'll see these carbon fiber rods. So you should have three nose bumpers and three carbon fiber rods. Carbon fiber rods are not necessary, not necessary unless you're using our deluxe launcher. They fit in the back plate on that device and give you the stabilization of the tail. Also, they keep the tail from hitting the forward launch trigger area and tearing up the tail. You should have some clay for nose weight. Next up, you should have these foam flaps should have three sets of them. Now if you notice I'm handling these very gingerly because they are fragile. Vector board you can bend and have it warp um, but you can straighten it out. This material is much more fragile. It's very brittle. Uh, not as bad as Rohacel but it is quite fragile so handle with care. You'll have three more sheets of foam and these are your horizontal tail the well the rear portion of it and your vertical tail or fin so you should have three each of those lastly you should have three sets of 1 16th balsa parts these are your wing leading edges wing tips stabilizer leading edge nose assembly and dihedral gauges We've changed up how we do the dihedral gauges, so um, I think you'll appreciate how they're done now. So let's carefully set the rest of these parts aside, because our first task is to work on the 116th balsa. Now you can generally just pop these parts out of this part sheet. I'm going to suggest using razor blade just to get uh, very nice clean cuts. And so what we first want to release out of here are the wings. So just hit up those little laser tabs. Um, occasionally there will be some spots on the sheet that don't burn all the way through. So check for those and hit those with a razor blade. Now, particularly with the wings, don't loosen this pylon yet. It's kind of fragile. And if you just cut it loose over on this side it'll stay in the carrier sheet and it'll be protected while you work on your wings. So we'll drop the wing leading edges out and then we're also going to drop the um, wing tips out. And then set the rest of this sheet aside for the moment. The 
wing tips are going to glue in like so. So all that you want to do is take the wing leading edge and put some glue right here in this notch area. Don't put it on here because you'll get some excess and that'll interfere with how you attach your flaps. But before you do that, you'll notice there are those little tabs on the straight part of the wing. Let's go ahead and just use a sanding block to gently remove that. You can also do a very light sanding here of the uh, wing root. Don't worry about the leading edge yet. Don't have to do anything on the wing tips yet, but do go over to your other wing and check that you sand it free. And there we go. Let's pop out some of our foam safe CA. Don't have to use foam safe at this step, but I think it's a good habit to just say we're going to not use regular CA throughout anywhere in the construction of this model. Now, what you're wanting to do here is build two symmetrical wings. So I recommend building them side by side like this so that you don't risk building two left wings or two right wings. At this stage of the construction, that is not really a concern, but in a few minutes, it will become a major concern. So at this stage, we now have two wing panels waiting for flaps. Before we install flaps, we're going to want to go ahead and do some sanding of this wing. So take one of these, take your razor plane, let me cap off the CA glue here, and we're going to go out here and we're going to gently taper down this wing tip, being careful not to break that tip off out there. I know this little hook on the tip looks kind of ridiculous and crazy, but that actually does help a little with performance, so try to protect that. The plane will fly okay without it, um, it's just that this gives you just a little bit better aerodynamic efficiency. You can also come along the back of the wing here, and we can use the razor plane to just take away a little bit of excess material here. And then what I'm going to recommend doing is at this stage, we are back to about here on this wing, um, right where that join is to the wing tip. And we're going to thin all the rest of that wing tip out to the same thickness here. So at this point, dig your uh, plane in and cover the full width of everything out here. And again, as we approach the wing tip, you want to become very, very gentle so you don't break off any more of the wing tip than you want. Just like that. So now my wing tip is really, really thin. Now, this is the bottom surface of the wing. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up having it flipped over and this will be the top. So what we're going to do at this stage is we're going to set this wing down for a second. And we're going to come over here and we're going to finish this wing. Now this wing I'm going to show you slightly different. I'm going to use balsa, uh, balsa, you're right, sandpaper to sand it down. And what I want to show you here is this is a much harder process um, to, and, and it takes longer. So it's easy to screw up much, much worse than usual. And this is why we like to use razor planes when we can. Now, if you're not comfortable with either, you can skip this step entirely and you can still get an airplane that flies remarkably well. What I'm trying to do is show you how to build the best airplanes. So I've stopped sanding at that same point that I did on the other side. Watch out for the dust, there's quite a lot of it that gets produced. Now I'm going to sand down that last bit of the wing tip. And check again at this stage, we are sanding 
opposite sides of these wings. And now we can come in here, sand all the rest of this. Sorry for the noise, the table's shaking a little bit as I do this. I'm bring in the parchment paper here. We want to feel that the wing tapers in thickness here. It's still not tapered quite enough. As you can see, this is a much, much more involved process. Now we will go back to the wing that we did do the planing on. You can see there are some rough edges. I don't know if that shows up on camera, but you can see a, a color change because this isn't as smooth as this is. This is the machine finished uh, wood from the factory. So all we're going to do is we're just going to take our sanding block. And we're going to sand off that roughness. And there you go. So you can see much quicker finishing time. Now set these down exactly like that so that you don't get them mixed up. At this point, we're going to flip these wings over together. It's very important that you do that so you keep them matched. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this wing tip up to the edge of the paper. And you can use a razor plane for this. I'm going to show you how to do it with the sandpaper though. We're not going to sand a conventional airfoil. We're going to bevel this. So you want this, I don't know if it shows up completely. I'll show you from the side what it looks like. We're going to sand at about this angle right here. So this is not, we are airfoiling this wing. We are not following what you see in your school textbooks. We are following what actually works in the real world. And so our goal is to apply this bevel to our wing's leading edge all the way around here. I do want to take those burrs off completely. I don't know how well this shows up. You can see there's a very sharp edge here that is about that angle. And it's almost sharp right here along the edge. We're going to do this all the way out there to the wingtip. So we'll take off those burrs. And we're just going to work this around all the way out here. All the way around. Now, if you who are teachers are watching this and want to know, um, I have a presentation where we talk a little bit about the effects of airfoil turbulation and why this works. Um, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this uh, particular video. We're just showing you how to implement uh, best practices in your gliders. And then you can do research um, aided by me or not aided by me, whatever, whatever you choose, uh, if you want to know more about this. Now we set this down. We've got beveled right here. So we're going to bevel over here. So we have two matching wings. And we simply do the same thing. Now that you have finished sanding both sides, we can look at attaching the flaps. 
I'm going to turn these wings upside down again, the side that we sanded back here. So the bevel is down on this side, the underside at the moment. And we're going to take out one of our flap sheets. Remember these are quite fragile. Now what you want to do is cut these laser tabs in here with a razor blade and cut them as close to the flap itself as possible. So hopefully we don't have to do any sanding. Now once you've got this flap off of here, we want to look to see that everything is nice and smooth. So you can just gently run a sanding block over it. Now what you want to pay attention to is it's only these edges right here that you're concerned about. This other part, not, not as critical. In this center section we may or may not sand, uh, cut down later for clearance anyway. So what we're going to do is the flap is going to fit into the back of your wing like this. You should have a little gap right here. I don't know how well that shows up, but there's a little gap between this root edge of the wing and the root of the flap. And that gives clearance for it to clear the fuselage once you're done. Now, before we attach this flap, you can sand these flaps to a taper. So you could sand the trailing edge of this flap to get it thinner, and that saves you a little bit of weight uh, and streamlines the flap a little more. I'm not going to do that because that does make the, that, that's a fairly complex process. Uh, but those of you who wish to experiment, you can do so. Just bear in mind, um, to be very blunt, I'm not going to replace your flaps when you mess them up um, by sanding them incorrectly. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this flap and we're going to glue it in place. And the way that we do that is we put the glue on the flap itself. It only takes a little bit of glue, so don't overkill it. Press that flap up in there, and more than likely, you're going to find that the glue takes a little while to harden. So, what you can do is while you're holding it in place, you, want, you can dip CA accelerator on here. I don't recommend spraying it, I recommend you just dip it in place. go. Now when you flip this flap over you should have a fairly smooth surface up here. You can sand this glue line if you so choose. But there is one wing uh, completed. We'll do the other one um, sitting it right beside here and then we'll come back. Now that we have both wings built out, what we're going to do is we're going to take these wings and fold, set them together like so. And so we can get a matched pair, we're going to take a straight edge of some sort, get it roughly parallel to the root here, and right about where this corner is of your flap you can come in here, don't come all the way to it, come about an inch back or make a slit with a razor blade all the way through. Now what you want to do is slide your 
sandings, well, your, your straight edge over about a 32nd of an inch, and we're going to make another cut. So what that results in is if you can see, I've got this little slit of foam sticking out here, and we can simply grab that and break it off. And now, you see we have this slot right here. The purpose of that slot is so that your flap when you get it set up to where it bends down like this, when it comes back up in, uh, on launch, it doesn't snag on the tip of the wing. Now, we are setting both of these wing panels back together, bevel side up. So these are the actual tops of the wings. At this time, you're going to want to sand for a little bit of dihedral. Now, a lot of people want to sand these things at an angle like that. And that is terrible, and it will mess your plane up. It's only a slight angle. You see how shallow this angle is? That's all that you need. And we just gently slide this back and forth on there. Again, shallow angle all the way so that you don't see any laser burn on this wing root right here. That means you've sanded all the way to the bottom. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And again, we're doing this angling towards the top of the wing with just this shallow angle. You see how shallow that is? Don't use any more than that. So what that allows you to do is have these wings come together at about that angle right there. Now, the way that we're going to achieve that angle is we're going to use dihedral gauges. So you will have these two parts right here. Let me drop out that look like this. You'll also have these two little pieces up here that have holes in them. pieces that have holes set them down here take this side that's just got the little notch not the angle up here just glue those in place and there we go two dihedral gauges now I'm going to soak those in CA Accelerator so that I don't accidentally glue them to my table if there's any unhardened CA around. Turn the parchment paper this way. You'll understand why in just a second. I'm going to set one flap here, or one, sorry, one wing here with the little dihedral gauge under it, just like that. I'm going to use my glue cap as a weight just to hold that in place. I will take my other wing, and again, this is bevel side up. So this is the top of the wing. Pay close attention to that. And we're going to take glue and spread it along that wing root. And we're going to slide this in place flush up against there. Take your time to get it right and set that dihedral gauge underneath. We want to make sure everything is lined up correctly here. Now this glue is going to harden fairly quickly. In fact, it's starting to harden up already. But once we're sure that everything is lined up here, it's not skewed this way or this way or like that. Everything is level together. Looks neat. Take your time to get it right. Then, come in here and dip some CA Accelerator onto this dihedral join. And there you go.
Now that we have the dihedral set on this wing, just lift it up, set it aside for the moment. This crescent shaped piece right here is the leading edge for your horizontal tail. So let's go ahead and break it out. Now, there is a notch in this flat part back here, and then there's a notch in the leading edge. We're going to set this up, if you are right-handed at least, we're going to set this up to where this little notch that's in the back is, where it is, this notch in the front is to the right of it. So if you're looking, you're right. If you are left-handed, you'll reverse that. So we're setting that up like that. Now I'm going to go get my horizontal tail. And I'm going to look for the same thing. There's a notch and then this little hole here, put the little thing out of it. It's going to set up like that. So if I put a stick across here, you can see that the notches right here where they join are to the one side of them. Now before I make this attachment, I'm going to take my razor plane and I'm going to thin this down just to save me some weight. Then glue this on. Set down, line up those notches. Again, it's wanting some CA accelerator to harden it up the rest of the way. And then you can sand this leading edge. I recommend sanding the top of it, of it which is what we have shown. You can even round off the foam a little bit here. Just be careful in doing so. You can sand this leading edge down much thinner than that, but that's a good place to be with it. Next, take one of these long skinny strips right here, just one of them, and cut it out. And take a fuselage. And we're going to bring a straight edge into the picture here. So we are going to measure five and one half inches back. What we're going to do is we're going 
let's run a bead of glue down this uh, piece of wood and we're doing it in the flat the wide side not the the late so the laser cut edges are around here we're doing it on the flat side so we're going to set one end of this at the five and a half inch mark just like that now we are going to put one end of our fuselage at zero and we're going to lay this in the middle of that not on an, an edge of it but right in the middle or try I've got it misaligned slightly there we go except my glue is not wanting to harden Just like that. Now, lay this down like so. Weigh it it's down with something, whatever you want to do. Now, uh, and I do want to show you, this is how it looks. So we're laying that surface down. I'm weighing it down with something. I'm going to set, so this is our five and a half inch end. Over here, we're going to measure about half an inch back. You can go up to three eighths, but I'm going to use half an inch just so I can get as much tail area as I can. And what I want you to do is run a bead of glue beside these notches, not on them, but beside it. So we're going to do it kind of like this right here see where the glue is I don't know how well that shows up yeah you can see it reflecting right there and we're gonna flip this over you gotta remember where you put that glue I'm gonna lay this horizontal tail on here and so the carbon fuselage should be just this side of those notches almost touching them. Now this is not going to lay down flat because that fuselage is up off of the table a little bit there. So we may have to add a smidge of weight right here just to get it to stay level. And now I can come in and I can add a little bit of CA accelerator. That'll hold it. Now what I'll do is I'll flip it over. Everything is relatively secure. That's good. Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to grab my, I'm going to pop my uh, vertical tail out. And it is going to sit in here in those notches. And if you did this right, it literally nests perfectly up against that fuselage. Put the glue along the full length of the vertical tail. Do not leave this end unglued. A lot of people want to so they can make adjustments. That is about the worst thing that you can do on this airplane. And on the side where the um, fuselage is, you can put a little bit extra so it'll bond to the fuselage as well. And then we just drop it down into those notches. Make sure it's close enough to straight up and down. And that's good right there. Now, take your other flat piece like this one that you glued on the fuselage. Go ahead and cut it loose. Set it right here and cut this fuselage pylon that we left in here. Cut it out. Now 
Now, this piece is very fragile because the grain goes up and down. Once it's in place, it's much stronger this way, but right now it's fragile. Gently sand those laser burrs off of it. Just very lightly on your sanding block. That's all you have to do. Resist the urge to sand the front and back. It doesn't help that much and you risk damaging it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of glue down this. Actually, let me correct that. There's an arrow facing forward. You can see with it facing forward, I'm angled back this way. So if I had it like this, I'd be angled that way. So flip it like that. That's the top. If it's angled this way facing forward we take that bottom side and we're going to put glue on it just like so and I'm going to lower it onto the center of this strip just like that so you can see I'm centered from the top view, and I'm centered close, as close as I can get, front and back. Hit that with CA Accelerator again. And now, that pylon is going to mount to the center here, just like that. Go find some masking tape. Break off a piece like so. And we're going to want to cut a little strip of it. Just like that. And so laying this down on here, we're going to wrap it around the front break off the excess so we need to make a couple wraps now we'll cut another piece and this is why you will want to have some strips like this cut up in your flight box so that on competition day you won't run the risk of running out of these should something happen to your plane. So we've got that securely on there. You don't want to put too much pressure, but you do want it to not be able to move around any, any at all like that. Now notice I've got the arrow pointing towards the shorter end. Got a whole lot behind me. And that's because this, with that arrow pointing forward, this is angled up ever so slightly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this whole assembly down. And my wing is going to end up mounting right on top of that. So you're going to want to come in here and it'll take you a little bit to eyeball to get everything lined up just right. Alternatively, you could do what I do, which is, quite frankly, to just eyeball the installation. We're going to want it on like that. You want it lined up correctly this way more than anything else. A little bit of tilt you can correct, but we don't want any skew this way. That will really ruin your flight pattern. Lift this back up off of here. Put glue all the way down your join line at your at the center of the wing and then carefully lower this wing into place and so it should be flush front and back and again no skew you can, you can sight along here to make sure that line is lined up with your fuselage and there you go at this point I'm going to check and we are glued firmly. I'm going to make sure of the integrity of that join. Um, 
by hitting it with a little bit of accelerator. And there we go. Go back to, oops, go back to your wooden parts sheet now. I'll set the dihedral gauges to the side and go ahead and pop out these little nose pieces. What you want to do is take one of these and the one with the slot, it's very fragile. If you break it, you can fix it, um, but try not to. Drop all that in together. So you should have this right here. Now that slot, go ahead and squirt glue into it. Take your airplane, hold it sideways like so, and drop the nose in there. And try not to glue yourself to it like I did. And now you want to sight down here and try to have that thing be straight up and down relative to the rest of the airplane, like that. And then we're going to put more glue on. Squirt some more in the slot to fill it up. Don't worry about a little bit of excess weight up here because the airplane tends to come out just a little bit tail heavy. And there we go. That's the completed nose and we'll put the bumper on it next. Ostensibly to create a higher margin of safety um, in the event someone is hit in the face with one of these models. Science Olympiad limit requires the nose of the airplane to be a certain shape. The result is that if I just glue one of these earplugs onto the front of the airplane it will be illegal because it's smaller than the diameter of that nose thing that they do. That is why we have this very fat front of our airplane. What you want to do is go in and clip off that much of the nose. Just a tiny little piece. The big piece, toss it aside. We're going to use the little piece. And so it's gradually expanding out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt glue on the back of it where I cut it. I'm just going to glue that directly to the nose of this airplane. And so I get a result like this. Now notice how long that is. So don't glue the entire nose bumper to the nose of the airplane. Just this little piece right here is all that you will need. The last step before balancing the airplane if you are going to be flying with the deluxe launcher, you will need to install these skids on the back of the airplane, or one of them, I should say. Each kit includes three because it includes three airplanes. So what you want to do is go into the wooden section of your stab right here like this, and we're just going to angle this guy forward, and I'm doing it on the fin side, so I'm actually going to punch this into the fin, and so what I'm doing um, you could use a straight pin to start this. Actually, I'm going to have to because there's enough glue that it's not wanting to go. So I'm going to take a straight pin and be careful to not poke my hand with it. And I poke it through to the other side. And it actually comes all the way up through my fin there. I don't know how I managed to be that exact. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt glue into that hole. I'm going to take this piece of carbon, I'm going to drive it up in there until it comes out a little bit out of the top. This is a little more length than I need, so I'm going to trim off the excess so that it only comes down about an inch out of the bottom. 
to me. There we go. So about that much. I don't really need any more than that. And that's all we need. Now the next task is to balance the airplane. So right now, I'll show you this way. Right now I'm balancing way, way back here. And I want to balance at the back of that pylon. I can actually see that mine didn't glue down all the way. So that's one time you want to take a pause real quick. Apologies on that. Much better. Okay, so if I'm balancing way back here, I want to come up here, I want to get some clay out. Also need to figure out where I put my glider balancer. There. Fell down. So let's set the plane right here. You can see that it's not really balancing how we want at all. So we're going to open some our packet of clay up. I'm going to grab a little piece of clay, and behind this nose bumper, I'm going to put some clay on the airplane. And I don't want it to hang down all the way where my rubber band is going to catch it. So we're going to put it about right here. We're getting closer. Let me slide this to make sure I'm right where I need to be. Oh, we're actually a shade nose heavy. So I'll take some of that back off. Oh. Put a tiny back on. Actually, I do want to be slightly ahead of that, so I'm just going to put all of that back on. Because that's about right. And so, that's pretty close. Now the next thing that we want to do, go over here to the corner of this table, just this section of flap here, not the tip, I want to rub on the table like this until I get some curvature in it. All the way back to... Keep doing this until it curves almost all the way down level with the fuselage. So, just like that. Come over on the other side and we'll do the same thing. go. Should have nice curvature right there. Looks like that. Beautiful. Take your uh, launch handle and cut off a piece of rubber that gives you a loop about a little bit about the same length as the handle. So that's about six inches. And we're just going to tie this off. size. So I've just tied a knot in the end. And what you want to do 
just take this and wrap it around the stick. So I've got this a little bit of excess right here, and I'm going to slide this uh, long bit through it. And this is called a slip knot, what I'm doing right here. And once I pull it through here, I want to take some glue and glue it in place. That way it doesn't come off. And there you go. Okay, so congratulations. You've got it built. Um, we have not weighed the airplane. We'll do that uh, as part of our trimming activity for the Super Protégé. Questions, comments, put them in the comments section below. And we hope you have fun in the 2021 Science Olympiad Elastic Lunch Glider contest season. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.